I'm Dave Cullen. I wrote the book Columbine, which is about two boys who seemed very normal and had opposite personalities moving in opposite directions yet arriving at the same place, mass murder. And it's also about an average American community wrestling with what they left behind. I started covering Columbine the first afternoon for Salon.com and two things kept drawing me back. I had to know what happened to those kids who lived through it and I had to know what drove the killers. They weren't trying to punish the jocks, they were trying to terrorize the entire country on television. And if we're gonna prevent more of these attacks, we have to start by understanding what happened here and why they did it. Eric and Dylan set the bombs in the cafeteria here and by that column there. At 11.18, they were set to go off and would have killed all 500 people in this room instantly. When they failed, the killers went outside to the top of that hill and started firing at everyone in sight. When they ran out of targets, they went into the school, down the hallway, and ended up in the library, which was that time was just above us. That's where most of the murders ended up taking place. Their journals tell us why they did it, but it's not a simple answer. And I spent years digging through to try to map out the gradual downward spiral of each of these two different boys and their different journeys to murder. Dylan really had a big impact on me. He was a really, really depressed kid, and I found out that I couldn't really transmit who he was or why he did it until I understood his pain, until I, I saw the world from the same miserable perspective he did. It's his slow evolution to murder that's truly shocking and startling because it could be any kid. Eric Harris fooled everyone. He was charming, he was well-liked, yet he was planning murder. So how do we identify those kids? How do we know when a killer like that is in our midst? Some of the victims were able to forgive the killers astonishingly fast, and that was tremendous for their recovery. But most felt rushed to closure, this healing which had to begin immediately, and they resented it terribly. Pretty soon, many of them were turning on each other. The most important thing other communities can learn from Columbine is don't rush the healing. It took eight and a half years to erect this permanent memorial. And at the groundbreaking, Bill Clinton read this quote from Ernest Hemingway. The world breaks everyone. And afterward, many are strong at the broken places.